You know? It's just it's, it's lowbrow talk. Okay. Right. How's your dick doing? Right. That type. <laughs> yeah. Of talk, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure it's healthy. It's worked in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it has. I know. Yeah, it. I know it has. A house is a lot of. Is it? There's things always breaking, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you like, mean? Like we rented a house and. There's always shit to deal with with a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I feel like in an apartment, if things don't break as much or... They don't. The downside to having an apartment, though, is one tenant has a roach problem. Everyone has yes, a roach problem. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's what guy... Remember the guy died. People die, too, and then it's... it's, it's oh, weird. one person has a fire. Everyone has a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> probably worse than the, the cockroach. Than the rock cockroach, yeah. Yeah. I worked in... A, I, lived in a, I lived in an apartment building, and a guy died in the building, and no one wanted to... Uh, we were, like, telling the super, we're like, something smells bad. And he was like, this, and he's like, look, it's fine, all right? They're probably a rat... Died in the wall. Settle down. <laughs> Used to people be in New York. They could handle this stuff. And then they found out it was like a guy had died and his body was decaying. Oh. And that's why it smelled. Yeah. And but not he, inside the walls. And not. It was. He was sitting in a chair, like just like I murdered him. He was <laughs> sitting in a chair and he had died watching TV. He had done like coke and. Had a heart attack. Oh, was wow. he? Com did he look comfortable? I don't know. I didn't see. I just. It, it gets we, sad when when the when they don't get discovered for months when they don't have family. That's always the sad part. Well, supposedly his parents came to town, at because they couldn't reach him. He was a student at NYU. Oh, was he Asian? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. You're Asian, correct? I am. Yeah. Well, I'm mostly Asian. <laughs> yeah, ah. I know. Mostly Asian. You're sixty percent. Well, I'm like, you know, like Mongolian kind of like blurs into like everyone Eastern, you know, like you're like you look at Russians and you're like, right. oh, you kind of look a little Asian. Like, That's where like I like Bjork, like Bjork. Yeah, yeah. Bjork has that vibe. Like, is she Asian? Yeah. Is she Bjork? Yeah. She's from Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. Yeah, but from she Iceland. has an Asian Asian vibe. Yeah, but it's just she's Kazakhstan. It all sort of like it all bleeds together. Kazakhstan, they all bleed together, correct? I had I had my hair cut in New York by <laughs> the gym tells the most boring story. <laughs> no, we love it. We love I it. had my hair cut <laughs> by a, a woman who was uh, of Korean nationality. But her family was uh, from St. Petersburg. We have legs. <laughs> uh, we can move. <laughs> right. Well, let's start the podcast. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah, uh, so that, that's da, 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 da. Uh, right, right. Go. Five, four, three, two. Father, mm -hmm. thank you so much for this blessed day that you have given us. Mm -hmm. um, we have, in, in this is first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. This is our first podcast in 2023. And um, Happy um, <laughs> um, New Year to <laughs> all of you. The first one we're filming. Excuse me? The first one we're filming. This is the first podcast we're filming in 2023. Yeah. 20 and I want to welcome <laughs> you guys. And we always open up every year with a, 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 a special. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A chosen one. Okay, so I'm gonna give them an intro, and I hope you like it. I, I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> this next man on our podcast is one chromosome away from being albino. That's true. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Yes, um, him and James Vanderbeek are having some sort of baby making competition. Um, that's. I mean, I. I mean, I, I haven't slept with him yet, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I keep say, telling him that doing it in the butt, there's not going to be. <laughs> but he's like, no, trust me. I mean. And I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. He's like, I'm Dutch. You're kind of Northern European. Let's do it. And I'm like, all right. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also, and I, I don't know how you're like with compliments, but, and I, I really, I really do mean this. I, I honestly think you're one of the best comics on planet Earth. Oh my gosh, that. Sounds number one, fantastic. No, it's real, <laughs> real. Number one, number two, right? 
I also I've always been mesmerized by you. I also memorize you, but because you're you you're a great joke writer, but you're also very clean. And I we've just been in awe of you. Oh. And um, I want to give him a deep round of applause, Jim Gaffigan, everybody. Clap your hands. Oh my gosh! Wow. Oh my god! What a thank you so oh, amazing! Much. Thank amazing. you so much. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me here. We have the same body type. We do. Yeah, we which do. is what? Which is um, uh, fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both uh, score out of our our depths. My wife's very attractive. Yes. You. I don't know how you pulled this. Out. <laughs> it's a uh, fucking miracle, right? <laughs> I mean, it is a miracle. But and then I don't know about your relationship, but there's there's moments when my wife is like, she knows she made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. like maybe funny's not that important. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know? Also, we when you get into a relationship, you put out your best self, right? Yes. But as years go by, you just go, fuck it. And I'm just yes. gonna give them everything. Right? Yes. And that's I guess essentially what love is, no? I don't know. I think it's all a con, but it works. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it is, I mean, I guess. Mm. I guess you know there's there's like love you get together there's this torturous period which is like 30 40 years and then you die <laughs> and like in those 5 minutes you're like I love you and that's the good <laughs> wow <laughs> thanks for that's being the whole there. gambit right there right thanks for changing my diaper yeah yeah, yeah. right i don't know it's hard it's yeah. a rough road we have problems we've been together 9 years mm -hmm. sexually yeah, oh, we're going there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Wait a minute. You? He's just given up. Well, he let his dick die. <laughs> you let your dick die. It didn't die on its own. I think he killed it. Well, you think I punched my dick till it died? What I the think... fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Strangled it. You know, it's just. I've it's... never done Viagra. Have you done Viagra? It doesn't work for me. It doesn't. No, I took three once. <gasps> yeah. And, oh, and my my penis went in my body. That's what happened. Oh, you fucked yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, I fucked oh. myself, that, and I go. This is the best drug ever. Like, it's not even like a hard on that lasts for too long. You can't go to a hospital. You have to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but How, it doesn't work. It does no because um, he had a porn, crippling porn addiction. I have a crippling for porn. a very long time. That's a problem. Why don't you just take a break for a month? Because I have internet, and it's always there. <laughs> and, and late at night, late that's at night, interesting. I it, think it, that's, it whispers to me. What does it say? That's <laughs> not that rare, right? Right? Gang, but gang bang, <laughs> gang bang. Do you guys, you guys don't have kids, right? We don't. No, we have seven animals, though. Seven animals. It's hard to do porn when you have kids around. Yeah. It's mm. so you can't. <laughs> but you do it um, on the road, no? Not, I mean, here, not as much as I used to. Yeah. Like, in my 30s, I think I wasted a lot of time doing that. But, I, you know, I know I look like I'm a young 27-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, um, there is, I'm glad my libido's gone down. Yeah. In, in, no, not in that way. <laughs> Don't look at me that not, not in well, that no, way. I'm, no, I, no. Well, it's, it's hard to separate it from the relationship. But the thing is, is like, Men, when they're like when you were when you were seventeen, like when, God, it's like I was a fuck machine. It was I like was when a you're, rabbit. When you're seventeen, it is, it's like you. Well, it's like every other cliche. It's just like this fever that, like, I don't know how I even got anything done. <laughs> I know, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's amazing that. Well, of course, I I wasn't successful with the ladies then. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, like, there is a certain like, oh, all right, I can read an article. <laughs> you know you, I mean? Do you remember a time when you were unfuckable, and then something shifted? Because that's what happened to me. Like, I couldn't get laid ever. I would like, even as an open micer, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Right? They just would see through me. Right? Well, I think it's a confidence thing too. Right? You think? So? I mean, I don't know. I'm. I, I'll just. For me, it's like I would say in my early 30s, I started having confidence in my stand up and then I started doing well in stand up. And I think that translated to confidence around women. Like I used to, 
be very like I just it was so it was brutal like being nervous around someone you liked is brutal Bru- and and so then I um but then I like dated some models I was like I'm gonna date a model <laughs> <laughs> and I dated a model and I was like wait a minute I don't even you know my wife's very attractive but it's like that's not as important yeah you know what I mean so like that that was my experience but like yeah there was there was also definitely a time where before a show, uh, you know, how uh, women would treat me was different than how they treated me after the show. Now I'm kind of like a dad, so it doesn't matter. Right. But like, But there was a time where it was, uh, Im- you know, where it was like almost pre- impressive. But there's also some confusion of like, do they like my comedy or are they attracted to me? I went through a period with... <laughs> yeah. I think they like me. No, they just think I'm funny. You know yeah. I mean? But it gets bundled up, all the emotions, right? It's yeah. hard to like, you know what I mean? But it's like, but they look at you different. That's what I saw. Yeah. Because I used to go to walk into a bar and I couldn't get anyone to look at me, mm-hmm. right? And then as soon as, when you do stand up and you have a good set and you go out in the lobby, yeah. and, and as a young guy, when you don't get girls and you're, you know what I mean, you have low self esteem. And when it first happens and when a girl goes, I, I think you're so funny and there's something about you. It, it just, it just, it, it, it changed me. Mm-hmm. Yes. It changed me. Yeah. And it made me, um, it, each, it helped each other, right? I, I got funnier as a stand up and I got more girls and they fed it. And then eventually I'm who I am now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, but, and, how but many, you, are you done you, with the kids though? Yeah. I mean, well, our oldest is nine. I mean, our youngest is nine. Um, so yeah, no, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. How many do you have? Five. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's a that's a, that's that's a lot. That's work. It's a lot. But how, how many you, how many you guys have siblings? Yeah, right? I have two sisters. Two sisters. But my mom comes from a family. She had ten brothers and sisters. Yeah, that's so it's so. I mean, five. You're not even hitting yeah, the correct number. No, in the my wife was one of nine. Yeah. Oh, she was? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was one of six, so it's like... But as, do you think that that's what... Because you grew up in, what, Indiana? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe I fucking... I fucking remember that. That's pretty amazing. That's fucking good. What a lot of people don't know, most people in Indiana, Asian. It's all... <laughs> really? Because it, when I went there, I didn't see any. <laughs> wrong Where did they go? Where did they go? Wrong it part. was all Asian. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was kind of like people were like, "Are you? Are we? Is this Indiana or Hawaii?" It was like very Asian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did um, you Did you get the vid at all? What's that? COVID. I I you know they I tested before I came in here and they're like, "You have COVID," and I was like, "Forget it." That doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened today. Yeah, uh, it was like an hour ago. Yeah, <laughs> but like the guy was like a doctor, and he believed in science. No, I, I have, I don't know, because I, no, I, I do know that I'm negative. I do know that I'm negative. I did Rogan's podcast on Monday. I they test you before you go in, and then and so I tested negative, and then they were like, and of course before Netflix even flew me out, they gave me a test, and so. And I was negative. And so, but when I was at Rogan, they're like, somebody else in his empire, you, you know, he has like 5,000 employees came in. <laughs> and uh, uh, Joe was like, I want you to do an antibody test. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And so it revealed that I had had it at some point, mm-hmm. but that I got over it because I have such a large penis. <laughs> Oh. Wow. That's so that's where I, I, I read I don't that. want that to sound like a brag. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying, I could have. I mean, I, at this point. You think I could have had vaccinated. it? Yeah, you could have been asymptomatic, especially with the way you move around town. I'm surprised. What do you mean? Honestly. Yo, does, is he like the face to the ground or how does he move around town? Like, <laughs> no, no. He's I'm licking no, everything. He just, he just scrapes the way his you, tongue across the, the pavement. The way you're licking every person you pass. <laughs> <laughs> she worries because I go to the Korean spa every day. Like, yeah. I'm going to go tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, it's just naked old Korean men. Like breathing on Breathing well, on each other. <laughs> That's we breathe on each other, right? It's a cultural Is thing. that all that happened? <laughs> <laughs> we suck each other's dicks as well. There we go. But, um, no, we breathe on each other, but she thinks that um, I'm just not being 
safe. It probably isn't the best place to go. Um, it's fine. It's maybe just the time. It's the time. But you're fine. I don't want to talk about it. It's fine. Well, it's, it's uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like I'm running a therapy session. <laughs> We'll That's each what have our turn. Come here, really? Come here. Yeah. But by the way, it's like my wife and I are the same way. Yeah. It's like, um, so wait a minute. So you're Korean American. Yeah. You are. Filipino. Is there is there some kind of status thing within oh. the Asian community? Like, Ooh, what nationality are you? Oh, oh. Foaming at the mouth. What nationality are you? What can you guess from? Well, I, I don't know the thing. shirt. I'd say Hawaiian. <laughs> um, <laughs> bing, no. bing, bing, bing. Same as her, but like. Not as Before. good looking. So, <laughs> so wealthy Filipino. Yeah. 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 No, but he, so like there is, I know that the Koreans, like the history, you know, I did a special about Asia. Did you really? <laughs> did you really? I did shows around Asia. Uh -huh. So I was like, I was in Seoul for like a day. But um, so like there is that. There's the hierarchy, right? Hardcore. So, like, the, the Koreans think they're better than the Japanese. The My Japanese dad gave think. me a list of uh, <laughs> the best ethnicities from what best are to the worst. Best? Number Jews one. Jews get a pass. My, right? dad, my dad goes, number one, Korean. Yeah. Which is obvious. Yeah. Number two, Chinese, which is obvious. Third was snake. <laughs> so, yeah, so there were animals and stuff, like, put in there, right? Black people weren't even on the list. You know what I mean? So yeah, my parents were, my dad was very, like he would stand up and go. Well, that's the, the that's a very Korean thing, right? They're very protective of their culture. Yeah. And they'd be like, if you marry Japanese, yeah. I, kill, I, kill my, I kill myself. <laughs> like really like. Even so. worse is probably Filipino then. What? Because the, Koreans yeah. really look down on Filipinos. Well, the mm. Japanese tortured the Koreans yeah, historically. Great so. animation yeah, though, huh? You know, the Japanese. <laughs> they do great animation. I mean, it's so neat. From their, <laughs> and some they, of the stuff they do, it's like, <laughs> it's, I love it. I know. Well, they tortured and how they the, fit into that little Godzilla the suit. It's so, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what do you what do you think about? Is it the University of Washington or Washington State that doesn't recognize Asians as um, POCs anymore? You're right. You're 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 on the same playing oh, field as white people. There are so many articles about that where it's like Asians are white adjacent and right. we're no longer minorities because Well, can I just honestly say we don't accept you? <laughs> well, um, no. Where do we go? Where do we go? <laughs> no, but the thing is, is I, you know, I don't know. I'm a white guy. I'm not going to say anything, but like. No, we want you to. You know, because we have by white the way, people. We, I'm we older bring white than people everyone. on the show, so we, we want to hear your point of view. Uh, and so when I, when I did that, that tour, I have a, a close friend. Uh, who she was born in Taiwan, and when I did a show in Taipei, she was there, and she was she's friends of the family and everything, and I've known her from college. But like, she again, I'm older, so like she's beautiful, she's an amazing person, and in college, it was kind of like guys were like, I don't know, I you know, I'd hook up with her, I don't know if I date her. Oh. So like oh. there was that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's disappearing. Yeah, but there yeah. was some of that shit. Yeah. I don't know. Is that the point that we're trying to make, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jim? I don't know, but it just <laughs> sure makes you sound like a slaveholder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. No, but she was. You know, she moved from Taiwan to like Louisiana. Oh. oh. And she would tell horror stories like. Guys, just like I want to just touch your eyes. Oh wow! Oh, fuck, oh my yeah. god! Yeah, that's, I mean, that's hot. That's hot. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Gilbert said that's hot. <laughs> you think that's hot? If a woman, I want to touch if your a bunch of girls came up to me like. Fan duel for you, fan duel for, for me, me too. too. You guys, I love UFC. I love sporting, and I love sport. I'm me and Kalila this year. We're be we're beginning to do you know light sports uh, sporting sport betting uh -huh. just for fun. You know what I mean nothing too crazy. And our place to go is FanDuel. Also, there's no better place to bet the NFL playoffs yeah. than on America's number one sports book. It's a simple and easy to use app with generous promotions every day. It's safe and secure with best in class customer service. Each win means that much more in the NFL playoffs. That's why FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking up new customers up with thirty to 
one enhanced odds for the divisional playoffs. Wow. For example, you bet five dollars to win one hundred and fifty dollars on any team to win any divisional playoff game. Just sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook and make a deposit to claim your thirty to one enhanced odds. Like Kalila said, it's safe and secure with the best in class customer service. And when you win, FanDuel will pay your winnings in as little as two hours. If you already have FanDuel wow. Sportsbook, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with $50 when you refer a friend. Plus, your friend will also get $50. Guys, don't miss your chance to win $150 off a $5 bet when you use the promo code BELLY when signing up. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, use promo code BELLY, and pick your divisional playoff team before kickoff. Disclaimer, 21 plus and present in A-C-C-O-C-T-I-A-I-L-I-N-M-I-N-J-P-A-T-N-B-A or W-B. New users only. $10 worst deposit required. Must wager in designated offer market. Max bonus $150. Bonus for TN users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. TN site credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gaming problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. C-O-I-A-M-I-N-J-P-A-I-L-V-A. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXTSTEP to 53342-AZ. 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat CT. 1-800-9-WITH-IT-I-N. TN redline 1-800-889-9789-TN or visit www.1800gambler.net. W-V. Landscape Valentine's Edition. You guys, my nuts are my favorite things in the whole world. They're my favorite things in the whole world. God bless world. you and take care, sweetheart. <laughs> and what I love to do is I like to take Manscaped and I like to shave them. I like my nutsack to be um, pristine, like showcase. Yeah. I want to showcase my sacks to the world to see. And the only way to do that is to use the best equipment. And the best equipment for your privates is ma- Manscaped. Yeah. Roses are red, violets, violets are, are blue. blue. Don't let, let a wild red. pube wreck you. Would you just create that? Because I that's a great poem. She just wrote that now. <laughs> that's amazing. You're so talented. The holiday went by so quickly. Do you guys remember? Do you remember to take care of your package with the best tools for the job? The performance package 4.9, 4.0 for Manscaped is just getting the thing every guy needs in their life to make each and every day just a little bit more special. Mm. You guys, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Please do us ladies a favor. And look, I don't mind hair. I just want you to show me that you care. Also another poem I wrote. <laughs> and just also- room a little bit down there. Can I make a preposition too? And I-, I February 13th. Can we make February 13th yeah. a uh-huh. national holiday? Okay. And we make February 13th the National Shave Your Balls Day? Wow, let's do it. Or, and just, I will be- or just groom. You don't have to shave it. Just groom is fine. Anyway, go, I'm going to let you guys know. This is what we use. Please get it. Go ahead. The number one product in this package is a lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. <laughs> and get this. <laughs> Wait, I have loose skin wear. In certain places. She said you got loose skin, bro. And get this, you guys. The Trimmer's advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate balls. It even has a 4,000K LED spotlight so you can shave anywhere your heart desires. Did I mention that it's waterproof too so you can take it in the shower? This Valentine's Day, it's time to join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. With our exclusive offer, go to manscaped.com slash tigerbelly for 20% 20% off plus free shipping. Once again, go to manscaped.com slash tigerbelly for our exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash tigerbelly. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash tigerbelly. Join Cupid and shoot your arrow with Manscaped this Valentine's Day. Yeah, so why don't we go to the Philippines? Well, didn't, uh, it doesn't Ali, uh, like, I don't even know, what is jungle Asian? What is that? <laughs> Filipino. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. That's Southeast Asian. Yeah, yeah. Southeast Asian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, isn't Southeast Asian, isn't that Indian? South Asia That's is South Indian. That's South, yeah. right. South, okay. right. Southeast I, Asia is I, Indonesia, I, Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. So all the attractive people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, but growing up, I hated my parents because they were so fucking racist that my brother and I, because we were so progressive. I don't know who taught us that. You just kind of are born and- It's an American story. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, it is though, it is. right? Yeah. And my brother and I would be like, no. I mean, because they would say, like, if you gay, I kill you. No, the, uh, yeah. you're joking. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. Really? He would look at me right now. You gay? I kill you. But what happened when you told him you had been with men then? All right, come, okay. Well, Jim doesn't even need to know that. Jim, would I like don't to care. Know, okay, so like to in know high that? school, all right. Well, first of all, it's not like I, I sucked a guy's dick and went home and went, guess what, dad? You know what I mean? I didn't get straight A's, but I sucked a dick. I mean, I, 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 I can't announce that to your dad. 
So when I was in high school, and people know this, all right, I, I would get drunk, and every once in a while, I would suck a man's pee pee. Okay. Okay. And it was because I was highly sexual. Women didn't like me. Okay. And I went, you know what? I'm going to get what I can get. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so desperate and sad. But that <laughs> Does it sound sad? It sounds like a teenager. <laughs> yeah, that, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's exa- I was a teenager, yeah. right? And um, so that's that, you know? Yeah, I'm not shaming you. I think it's great. I love that about you. You do? Yeah. Oh. It's so interesting. So the... <laughs> Is it a doctor? I, 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 I f- unfortunately, we have to end this. <laughs> um, I have next Tuesday at four. No, no, no. You're fucking finishing. Um, what is the? God, it's so fascinating. It's why? So why? Fascinating. Why? Just how human beings like we never figure this shit out. Yeah. And you know, like we, you know, like we talk about like what we were the culture that we were raised in, and there's progress, but like. Then I have teenagers, and they're kind of like, you guys are idiots. Do you know what I mean? Like, it keeps moving. Do you know what I mean? So, like, we we tear apart some of the biases that we were told or whatever, and then we discover new ones. Yeah. It's- so, it's like, I like to think I'm a good dad, but I'm probably, you know, in 20 years, my kids are going to be like, yeah, my dad was like this. Jim, I, I, wa- I watch, I follow you on Instagram and on socials. And I don't know you at all, but I want to say this. Based on your socials, I believe that you're a great dad. I look like a good one. No, you do cooking shows with your kids. That was because of the pandemic. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? You think any other comic incorporates their fucking families into like social media? They don't do that, right? You're a good dad. Hopefully. Well, we'll see. And I see your kids and they look healthy. Jim, yeah. do you know how to cook rice? Oh, good question. That's such an interesting Very question. good question. Um, I don't. <laughs> Why'd you ask that? I, but my cooking show was what about kind of nothing. Asian are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we want to know what kind of well, Asian you are. I know how to grow it, okay? You give me one grain of rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe five feet, I can grow 10,000 things of rice. <laughs> things. That's how it's measured. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a funny story. So we had... So I have all these kids, and one time we um, we have babysitters, and we uh, went to Florida to Disney World, and I was doing shows, and so we brought our babysitter, and she's from the Philippines, and we were at the airport, and we were they were weighing our bags, we were checking them in, and her bag was like eighty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I was like, uh, why is it eighty pounds? I'm like, well, just. Take whatever you got in there and put it in this bag. Can I guess? Yeah. Sacks of rice and cans of spam. Yes. Well, not spam. Vienna but, sausage. But she had, <laughs> I think it was a fifty-pound bag of rice, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, we're gonna, f- we're gonna feed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was like, I just, you know, it's just like, just in case. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, and I totally understand yeah. that because when I go on the road with my family, we bring, like, let's say we're going to Joshua Tree and my mom goes into a panic because she's like, I don't think they have rice there or the kind of mm. white sticky rice that I like. So we, right. what do we do? We bring the rice cooker and we bring her calorie rice. I have never been to a city where they didn't have fucking rice. I know, but the thing is, is uh, it was, by the way, it's like, it was sincere. It wasn't like she was like, you know, I got to bring some fucking rice. Like, it, but I think it was like, <laughs> it was a sincere thing. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe All right. they're not going to have it. Yeah, Being it's, like, it's like a water insecurity because rice is eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Yeah. It's, you cannot have a meal without rice. Yeah. Okay, why do you talk to me like I'm not Asian? Because I, you, I don't do know. Fucking, <laughs> you don't I know. do the fucking same thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't know how to cook rice. I know, but yes, I do. Oh, those. One cup. Uh, don't you say I taught that. You one, one cup of rice, <laughs> one cup of fucking water, man. When did you learn that? What? When did you learn that? <laughs> Yesterday. From who? <laughs> From who? You. <laughs> Look, men are dumb, right? You we're dumb. I'm, we're very dumb. Yeah. Uh, and there's certain things where I'm just like, by the way, uh, when I was, I didn't own a coffee maker until I was 30 because I thought they cost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, well, why don't you just get a coffee maker? I'm like, I don't want to waste some money on it. They're like, it's 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, really? 
so I'm, 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 I'm so I don't know how. Your ratio was off with the rice, by the way. What do you mean? A little bit more water. Different ki kinds of rice um, um, need different amounts of water. So the one that you were cooking yesterday, it's a little bit over one cup of water. You got it wrong. You're a poor student. That's okay. Bobby, how, <laughs> how um, if you don't mind me asking your age. This is a fun game. Yes. Will you guess? Well, first of all, I will guess. I will guess your age, and then I will add a year because in Korea. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, right. Oh, very good. Yes. Right. So, will you tell the people what that is? So, what that is is <laughs> in Korea, they when a baby is conceived, the first year is when uh, the baby's growing inside, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, the first when the baby is born. The baby it never leaves the house for how long? For I think an extended twenty-five years. <laughs> and no, and then like <laughs> the baby uh, is always on the ground. Like there's no cribs. Or yeah, like, putting up. It's like it's. Too I think much when risk. you're born nine months old, is that what? Yes. It is? Yeah, and then you have your hundred day celebration. Yeah. 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 Mm. Is is it in? I don't know if it's Korean, but like they might not. In some cultures, they don't name the baby until that first year. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you have a Mongol? Do you know about our Mongolian marks? No. Koreans, Asians have Mongolian marks. What is that? It's so the, like Genghis the, Khan <laughs> relic yeah, yeah, yeah. thing? It's like a branding. When you're born, Genghis Khan brands you with, no. It's a tail. No, it's, a, it's, no, it's basically a purple <laughs> spot somewhere on our bodies, right? And it's there. It fades the? over time. Yeah, as you see get right older. there? Really? Yeah. But imagine Jim having one of those. His whole With back. his skin, his whole back. it would be so, it would, it would be, be like a tattoo. It would be pretty. It would be beautiful, I think, yeah. But we have that. And so, wow. It bur and it burns. Wait, not anymore. It's faded since it's only <laughs> no, stays for a couple. Can I tell you where mine is? Can, yeah. can you see if you can see mine? It's not, I'm not pulling my pants. Is it, is it, it's like a birthmark, Oh, right? yeah, it's right here, it's here, here. Right, it's right here. It's right here. It's a tattoo. Oh. Yeah. I think it's more the of like star? <laughs> the star of David. Yeah, I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's just showing you his ass. <laughs> You're like, we. What we do is we bring <laughs> these dumb white motherfuckers <laughs> in here, and we make up shit. We open our we butthole. We throw up a slide of Asian yeah. people with birthmarks. These dumb white people believe anything. <laughs> They're like, oh, I want to be liberal. I want to be progressive. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so fascinating. Yeah, we have those things, man. And it's like, I don't know why. Do we get bruised in there? I, I don't know. It's just the same way Jewish people have to test for Tay Sachs disease. You so you, do you know who Joe Wong is? Hello? Joe Wong <laughs> is Who's a Joe Wong? Is a Chinese comedian from China. Mm -hmm. I think he might be living here now. But he is also he's ethnically Korean. Because uh, uh, on top of the Korean peninsula, you know, where China is, there's <laughs> yeah, yeah. People that are ethnically Korean, and he's a great comedian. I love him. Very funny. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, at the comedy store. He's super nice. Very yeah. funny. Super nice. Super, and he I he opened for me when I performed in uh, Beijing. Oh, he did. Yeah, because he's he did school in the U.S. Then he went over, and I don't know what's going do, on. Do do you get scared when you're in China? Like, is it expats that go into the show, or are there? Yeah, it's all well, or or people that have done time internationally like when i performed in japan there were definitely people that were had uh japanese people that had you know studied in the uk or america yeah 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 did you go to the philippines at all i haven't yet i want to i think you would crush it there you i can arrange that all I my friends do the big shows they there do the they do shows. like the really? Chappelle. yeah Chappelle was just there um before the pandemic so they do because the his big... wife's from the philippines yes. yeah or yeah. Her, she's her yeah. family i love her but comedy, you would crush it there. well, the Philippines is an English-speaking country, right? Right. So right. compared to other Asian countries, it's just an easy market, and it's right. a missed market because it's like people yeah. are so hungry for that there. If we do our talent show, mm -hmm. you would be a great judge. <laughs> what a fish out of water! <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do a talent show in the Philippines. You do? Yeah, we do a local. How often do you guys go there? We go a lot. So we do a local talent show. Where we put on the paper. We go Bobby Lee's talent show, right? <laughs> And the whole city, small town. No, it's a small, small tiny provincial area. Not the whole, not my whole so island. So, how the whole village is, is that better? Is it in? Uh, how close is it to Manila? Um, it's about 
Uh, um, and 50 minute flight south you have to swim is where there. I live. You'd have to swim there. It's <laughs> a different island. Is it one of the, is because there's also islands in the Philippines that are Muslim. Is it one of the Also, Muslim most ones? of the south is Muslim, yeah. Aren't I smarter than you'd think I, I'd be? Mm-hmm. You, have, you been, have, you, have you been going on the road or no? I did um, uh, like September to December. I'm kind of taking January off, but. Yeah, some. You haven't? I, you I haven't. just, yesterday I canceled all my gigs. <laughs> Mr. Gaffigan? I don't know what the fuck to do! The necessity of invention creates things. What right? is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you might, like that panic. By the way, the panic that you're experiencing right now <laughs> is... I, I feel so wise. <laughs> you are, you're very <laughs> no, wise. You're but wise it's like that panic could also, you know, force you to come up with some beautiful ideas. Right. But you think I could do that in two days? Probably not. Yeah. But. Exactly. You could come up with some. Yeah. But you can't do some old material or no? He's also nursing a massive oral abscess at the moment. Wow. I have a, um. So does that. that um, I have a golf ball of an infection in my hmm. gums right now. Wow. And I went to the to get a root canal, and they said we, they can't do it this morning. <laughs> well, then you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it hurt. That. All right, so I canceled. I don't know why. Why did I get on my knees? I know it was for a long time. It was it was <laughs> <laughs> very theatrical. <laughs> but I feel like that's kind of you, that you kind of move a little bit when you I, I, do I love things. to move. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I say so, also one last thing yeah. to you? Is um, This is the last thing. <laughs> no, I'm going to do five <laughs> no, more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I also think, and, uh, and don't take this the wrong way, I think that you're a great actor. Oh, well, thank you. I hope. Yeah. yeah. And I've always thought to myself, because I've seen you in some things, do you prefer one or the other? I mean, because I, I, I do some acting, too. I love acting. I love it, too. I love it so much. Because it's so hard. It's so hard. But, like, as you know, it, it's weird because, obviously, we like being funny, but I love all kinds of acting. Yeah. You know? And so there is something of kind of being pigeonholed as the funny actor so i do appreciate that but it is it's not one that i prefer it's not that i prefer one over the other i feel like they're so different they're different mediums and they're different highs yeah you know they're completely different highs and when like when the first time i acted it was a comedy and i didn't get any laughs because i didn't know right obviously you can't no one can laugh right yeah and in video village you know people kind of they laugh there but when i did my first scene i thought Oh my god, I'm terrible because they're not laughing. But I realize that like they're listening, and um, when I can get a difficult scene down, yeah, it just, it, there's a feeling of it. Like, oh my god, I did something that was so hard. And also, you can become someone else. That's what's yeah. really fun, or a different version of yourself. Yeah, I like being a fat Chinese guy. Or I like, like being just, a Japanese fat Chinese guy. Or a or gal. A gal, like being. I've played a lot of women in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I like how you look around like. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> so, Jimmy. All form by Helix. I just created that jingle because I create jingles for companies I love. Mm-hmm. And all form, I'm going to say something like the couch that we have right here is an all form couch. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that we have many couches in this house. I come here this last week and I laid on that couch. I'm not every single day mm-hmm. to wow. take a nap. I love that couch, okay? So if you're listening to this show for a while, you've probably heard of us talk about our Helix mattresses, which we're obsessed with, right? Yeah. That's why I'm so excited to tell you guys that Helix has left the bedroom Uh and is starting to make sofas. And they've just landed a new company called Allform, and they are already making the best sofas in the game. Go ahead. So what makes all form sofa really cool? Well, for starters, it's the <laughs> easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. Like for instance, like because we have a limited space in this garage, we chose the color, the legs, the, what do you call it? The configuration, mm-hmm. the size, everything. You can pick your fabric even if it's spill, stain, and scratch resistant. The sofa color. They've got armchairs and love seats all the way up to an eight-seat sectional. So there's something for everybody. And you can always start small and buy more seats later on if you want all for, your all-form sofa to grow and change with you when you move. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash belly. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash belly. 
get all four. Get intimate with Roman. Yeah. I love intimacy. It's my thing, man. And I want to learn how to do it. You know what I mean? It's something I never learned to do, but Kalal is teaching me, man. Ooh. And I'm going to say this right now, guys. You know, if you have ED, man, your your days of like suffering is over. Mm. Your days of what you... I, I, I've done this too. Get naked in the bathtub. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have ED. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You put a, bl- a wet blanket over you and you think about doing stuff to your bad. And what I'm saying, <laughs> you don't have to do that anymore mm-hmm. because you have this beautiful company called Roman. And you guys... ED is more common than most people think. Yeah. Right? I know you have it. In fact... <laughs> How do you know he has it? He's just his eyes. His oh, vibe. Got it, got it, got it. 52% got it, got it. of men between the ages of 40 and 70 will experience some form of ED. I've experienced it. The benefits of ED treatment can help you reconnect with your partner and rediscover the joy of sex. Roman Ready is confidence personified. It is the self-assurance that comes from knowing you've prepared yourself for the moment when intimacy arrives. Roman system is completely confidential and totally discreet. No big logos or labels or packages. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Go to getroman.com slash belly now to speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about erectile dysfunction and get $15 off your first month of treatment what? guys there's no shame in ed 52 percent. that's a very very big number of people who will probably get it just in like their lifetime just like Lala said go to getroman.com slash belly and, and complete an online visit go to getroman.com slash belly today and if you're prescribed get 15 dollars off your first month of ed treatment that's getroman.com slash belly for 15 dollars off your first month of ed treatment if prescribed make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall roman ready <laughs> Do you guys remember the time you first met each other? No. I, don't I, I do. Uh-oh. What's that? When was it? So the f- only time I've ever met you was I took a photo. It was two years ago, three years ago, before the pandemic. Was it at the comedy store? It was at the comedy store. It was the main room. I was with Brad Williams. Okay. And well, yeah, we, were we in we the We were back? there, and we took a photo. And I remember being so nervous, because I have never talked to you before, Jim. Now we're best friends. Now we're best friends now. And also, it's like, now... When I go to the club, I can just be more comfortable around you. You know what's so interesting is what? you like to think of yourself. I mean, like I did a, a Cheeto Santino's. Uh, it's an Andrew Santino. <laughs> uh, I did his podcast and he texted me later and he goes, I thought you didn't like me, but now I know you love me. And it's weird. Like, do I give off a vibe where I'm not like warm and friendly? <laughs> is okay. that it? Yes. I do? Yes. Um, no. no I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an argument. You think everyone hates you. That's not what it is. I think you come off real sweet and warm. You no, know, mm-hmm. that's what, it, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not what I'm saying. Jim Gaffigan is a sweet, lovely, peaceful man, okay? What I'm saying is that because I don't see him ever, right, and then all of a sudden you walk into a green room and then there's Jim Gaffigan, right, and you kind of go, Oh, how cool. You're a comic. You're a part of it. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's that more that than you. Oh, right. Right. It's more, you know, you're not you didn't around. You see me tearing down those stop Asian hate signs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't see that. No, no. I mean, no one, don't bring it up. Yeah. But I also know this, that like when you were at the Comedy Cellar back in the day. Yeah. Um, and you were having your children and the way you would do your sets and have these kids. At oh, the yeah. same time, and the way you were juggling all of that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I heard from comics from New York that would talk about it, that you were just like always going up, but had this young family. Oh, yeah. And how did you juggle all that? You know, it was, it was a great uh, break from the chaos. But it was, I don't know. But I you hadn't made, it. Had you made it at that point? Bef- did you have kids before you made it? I did not. I had one kid and one on the way when I was taping Beyond the Pale, which was my first comedy special. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, but when my daughter, my first daughter was born, uh, I was definitely, uh, there was no guarantees, you know, that, I mean, I think I knew I wasn't, I, I could support a child, but I didn't think that I didn't contemplate having five or, yeah. you know, living in this nice house with you. Well, yeah, yeah. You know but, I mean? but the reason why I'm asking, Jim, is because I have a fear as a comic Yeah, that, like, I'm 50 now, and I look at someone like you, and you have, and Al Magical is another one with kids and other comics, and I, 
And I think to myself, can I do it? Am I, because I go out, I, the, my job, we, we're children. Yeah. Right? We play and we fuck around and we're free in that way. And it's like, I'm, I'm just afraid that I'm not going to be able to do it. As a dad. As like, a dad. Mm. I think you underestimate yourself. I think that anyone, because think about it this. There's a lot of funny people, but like to pull it together and do a set and also, you know, what, what your podcast here is successful. It's like you're playing and you're doing it. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like the whole parenting thing, it's, it's, Look, it's really hard, but it's also important for evolving. Like, look, we know comedians that you guys are in a relationship for nine years. We know people that, like, can't pull off a month. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you definitely can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And also it's like the universe is kind of like, you know, like opportunities show up. You're not going to be broke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like there's people that did it in much harder circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that my fears of it, it, can I financially do it. I, I think I, I, I think I worry about because I have weird things where it's like, you don't know this about me, but I'm very unhygienic. Mm -hmm. I smoke, right? Yeah. I wake up at 4 p.m. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have, I've never, I haven't changed since I was a young guy as a stand-up. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, I know I have to change those things if I want children, but I really want them. Well, then you... Then have them. It's not that hard. It's And by the way, it's like... I fear this fear. You don't have to grow the baby. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Why? Because now you're telling everybody the truth, that the holdup has never <laughs> been me, that the holdup has always been you. Oh, Dr. Gavigan crushing it. Sorry, Jim. Uh, he's walking out. <laughs> He's walking out. Uh, Bobby, yeah. get back here. Bobby, you're right. Bobby. You're right. You hear a door has, slam. The, fe the fear, <laughs> you know what, babe, babe, you're right. The fear has always been me. There is never the right time to do it. There isn't. There's never the right time. Yeah. I, it's like, oh, I'm 20. I don't have, I don't even have a, a serious job. Or, oh, I'm, you know, she's about to do this or that, or you're doing, it's like, it's never the right time. But and by the way, the world's on fire. It's like it's not yeah. a, the right time, but it's 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 like a piece of life that is. And I'm not saying everyone has to do it. Yeah, but I do think that like it'll, you know, like you'll meet the task. I think so. I, I think it'll change me. Yeah, you don't have kids just so. You I'm not gonna do it to change you. me. Yeah. I wouldn't do it to change me. It's kind of like a, a you know an exercise thing. This kid's gonna make me lose weight. You know what <laughs> I, mean? <laughs> I had a kid, so I get in shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, maybe you know, you know. I think maybe, maybe. <laughs> I think you named the baby Jim. Jim's a great. That's name. a great name. A great name. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jim is Lee. Jim a short for some other name? You know James. how like. James. Yeah. James. James. Oh. James Lee. Yeah. James Lee. Are your kids comics or no? I have a 16 year old son that's pretty funny. Yeah, I can tell. Oh. And that's. <laughs> How scared that's, are you? That's. It's. It, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? How scared? It's pretty. Yeah, but like, I. The weird thing is, is like, again, this goes along with what we were saying. It's like, it's one thing to be really funny, it's another thing. To embrace that level of insanity to pursue it. Yeah. Because I have brothers that are funny. It's just like, like you have to be a little bit off to be like, yeah, I know I'm not making money for six years or, you know, <laughs> right. and the audience only laughs every third time I do it, but I'm going to continue doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. So I don't know if he's going to do it. He He's funny. I mean, my daughters are very funny too. They're yeah. all funny, but like, it's about do you want to go through it? Yeah, it's the pain because it, you're going to have to as a dad, right? And you're a comic, so you know what it is. The first five or six, seven years of them struggling, yeah. right? And you're going to have to hear all the pain and yeah. suffering that you relate to, right? It, it's it's hard. What if yeah. one of your children or your future child is 
terminally unfunny and you know it and you're like, fuck, Ooh. my kid is so unfunny. But then he says, dad, I want to be a comic. And I love you. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good that's one. That's a hard But of all one. five children, the least funny one. Oh, geez. Well, Mitzi <laughs> said you can't support, it's a sin to support mediocrity, right? And so- um, It's also a sin to crush dreams. And we mm. also, we all know people that are not super funny off stage, but can pull it off. Yeah. You know my theory? I have a theory, and I don't know if you'll agree with me. I think that anybody who tries it, it, you could take them 20, 30 years, but I think everyone could develop some set. Do you think people, like, George. oh, no, him, he tried it. <laughs> Jim, yeah. he tried it. Yeah. I almost quit. <laughs> Is that Irvine? Irvine? When I saw him perform, I go, I quit. That I don't ever want to see that again. That you was tried the worst. to burn a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Here's what it is, dude. You tried. She did it. Oh, yeah. I did it. Nineteen? How many times? Nineteen times. You did, did your wife do it? You did nineteen. Yeah, my wife did a little bit. She more did more sketch. Oh, more sketch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We glom onto each other, baby. Yeah, we do. God, dear God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Show Doctor Jim a kiss. You have a mouth for Joe. Joe. <laughs> Joe, 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 Joe. Come on. You have a mouth abscess. That was attractive. That was sexy. She's looking at you like, I'm not contracted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm contracted to pretend to be your girlfriend. <laughs> There's no physical interaction involved. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah, that felt weird. Yeah. She was yeah, like, yeah. come on, babe. That felt weird. Yeah. <laughs> that hurt me. Why are you sweating so much? Because I put the AC on. No, because I put the heat on all summer. I mean, winter. Yeah. Because I played video games down here, oh. right? And that's why I'm sweating. All right? Okay. We have a guest. Don't do this. Okay. Just making sure you're not stroking out or anything. No. Okay. I, I want to talk about something important. Okay. The last Go thing. Ahead. Sorry. Okay. Were you friends with Bob? I was. I yeah. mean, everyone was. Yeah, right? me too. Everyone loved him. I haven't. We haven't talked about it. Obviously, it's the first one, and I, I, I want to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, number one, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. One of a mensch, one of the right. nicest guys I literally have ever met in this right. business. Because you meet fuck faces in this yes. business. People and when that I was a young, steal a piece of your dignity. Your dignity. They steal material. They're they're fuck. They stab you in the back. You know what I mean? But yeah. Bob is not that. When I was a, a doorman at a comedy club, he would talk to you and go, what's up, man? Remember your name? And yeah. he was just a great guy. And what happened Sunday was so shocking. I'm still not over it. Yeah. I'm in a daze. It I is. love that guy. Yeah. It's really, he's one of those guys that you, it reminds me of like when I was in high school and there were like these upperclassmen that were like oh i want to be like that yeah it's like with bob the way he interacted with everyone and he was sincere and he, he must have been texting people for like two hours a day yeah because you always hear these all these stories yeah you know he was always checking in it's so it's he's you know what a positive influence yeah steve harvey just read an email that he didn't read from bob saget from like five six days ago and he was crying when he was reading it but it's like yeah, he texted a lot. He emailed a lot. Of, he, yeah. He reached out to people. He, Jamie Kennedy, he really helped that guy's career. I mean, he just, it, this, it, it, was, it was just a real fucking loss. And it wasn't like he was helping or kind because he wanted something. He was doing it because that's the decent thing to do. Yeah. He wasn't kind of like, hey, do me a favor so I can do you. You know, it was just like, Hey, I think you're funny. I'd like to do something for you. Yeah. 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 And uh, he also gave me AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did he Bob. really give me oh, the AIDS? Bob. Oh, um, but here's what the, also the the last thing I want to say about it is <laughs> because we don't know what happened mm -hmm. with the autopsy. We don't. They, it takes yeah. 13 weeks or whatever, right? Really? Oh, yeah. That's what they say, right? So there's no re because he was generally healthy and it's he like, was not a. He was not a partier. He might have a drink, but right. He had a drink or two. That's it. He's not a cocaine guy. I don't. I don't want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's it's wrong to speculate. Yeah, I don't want to speculate. Early. I don't yeah, want to speculate. But um, um, it was a huge loss, and um, 
I'm just really sad about it. That's all, man. It sucks, yeah. man. We all, we lost some people in the last couple of years, man. Mm-hmm. In comedy, it's fucking. Is did you ever know him, Brody? Yeah, yeah, I knew him in New York. Oh, you did. Uh, and he was, cause he bloomed into the Brody we knew, and like initially, he was just kind of finding his way in New York. I think he started in Seattle, and and um, I remember I used to call him the murderer. He would come in, and I'd be like, "Oh my God, the murderer is here," <laughs> <laughs> and he loved yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but again, he's like another light. You know, yeah. like there's these people that bring light rather than darkness and it's uh it's amazing yeah wow what a fucked up couple years man it is weird also it's it's one of those things like when you're a kid and you hear your you remember hearing your parents talk about people dying you're like (laughs) you know and now we're the same people and then they died too you know what i mean (laughs) we've turned into those people god bless their soul you know what i mean yeah it's weird yeah it's so weird i'm just so glad i'm not gonna die i don't think you are what a relief (laughs) for you what's that 90 i think at least at least 90 Mm. for you man now how long do you think you got (laughs) he's real emo about this stuff Really? Yeah. yeah Every really? night before we go to bed. Oh, you're so you're kind of like uh, my tooth hurts. I'm gonna die. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. And he wakes up and. We, this is something I do. Mm-hmm. That, you don't know why I, I'm I'm about to reveal something okay. about myself. Every morning I spit in the, in the um, f- f- sink. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. To see what my mucus looks like. The color. Right. When you cough uh-huh. it up. When I cough it up. And what what do you think the colors mean? Red is bad. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> good guess. Red is bad. Good guess. What does red indicate? But it, what Blood. if you had a what if you had a red popsicle right uh, before that? That's true, yeah. right? That's tough. Right? Sometimes. That no, happens. I think that like yeah, no, I've looked at my spit and I'm kind of like <laughs> yeah. Or there's it's mean? it's dark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not good, but I have this really unhealthy fear of dying. My poor really? niece, yeah. she lives with us, and she loves him every day. What has she been doing? She's been counting the amount of times he has coughing fits. Oh, oh, really? Coughing yeah. fits. What is this? Mucus color spectrum. The black is good. <laughs> that's infection. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Black's not good. I <laughs> love this chart because they were. Yeah. Someone was like, you know what? Let's go different shades for different colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, why don't we do a Nickelodeon kind of vibe? Yeah. Oh, like a gag, yeah. Something neon, you know, something fun. Away, fly away, fly away. You guys, away? Listen, I travel a lot. I do too. She does as often as I do. Mm -hmm. But her and I are slick travelers, Mm. and we're very... Um, how do I say it? Elitist in, in terms of... The, <laughs> the, the, no, just listen, listen. In terms of the kind of things that we use, we use great products, right? The suitcase is great. And we use away suitcases in this whole family. Tell them about it. I am... This is not a joke. <coughs> not a joke. Everyone in my family travels with an away suitcase. They have a really, really... They have great options for colors. My stepdad, Roger, has a yellow one because he says, I can spot my um, luggage really easily. I know which one I'm picking off. What do you call those? The carousels. Mm. Um, I have two away ones, one big one, one big carry-on. Everyone has it here. It has all the features you need to be um, a modern day traveler. All of away suitcases are designed to last a lifetime with durable exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers, which is... This yeah. guy. I mean, this guy, th- what you do okay, with your anyway, luggage? A TSA approved, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but a TSA approved combination lock that keeps all your belongings safe. Right, and every suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help <sighs> you pack more in and in hidden and removable laundry bag. What is that? How do you say that? And a hidden laundry bag that separates your dirty, dirty clothes. And I know you guys don't think that's a big deal. That is such a big deal big for me. Deal. When I pack to go back home, I need my stuff separated from dirty to clean. Go, Gilly. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash belly. That's awaytravel.com slash belly. Fly away. Away. 
All right, so at the end of our podcast, Jim, we do an unhelpful advice. People email us yes. problems and we answer them. You don't right. have to be helpful. You can be negative, but okay. we'll just see how where this takes us. Great. Go. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Jim Gaffigan. Hey, guys, my name is Gemma. I'm a 27-year-old woman from Ireland. Since the pandemic hit, my mental health has plummeted to the point where I thought about ending my life. I find myself living in the past, haunted by the person I used to be. As a teenager, I went through some tough times, which affected my behavior. I disconnected from reality, lied constantly, and was a drama queen, to say the least. I realize now that this was a coping mechanism, but I can't stop the negative thoughts circling my brain about my past behavior. My question is, do you ever find yourself haunted by your past? And if so, how do you manage not letting those thoughts cripple you? Ooh, the past. The past. Well, I try not to punish myself over and over again for one mistake. You know, I have notorious for fucking up in the past and then thinking about it for 30 years. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not, I don't do that anymore. It's an unhealthy, you know? Um, and I just feel bad for the kid. Maybe he needs medication. She's 27? Yeah, 27. Medication? Mm -hmm. Why? I think ever I think it does it all gets easier. Like I think that like twenty seven is still that's still chaos time. Mm -hmm. So it gets a lot easier. Like I have teenagers and I'm like, look, this sucks, but like it gets a lot easier. So it's I would say, Dr. Gaffigan would say, <laughs> put it in perspective. Obviously I would uh, you know, I mean, I'm being Korean, a very Christian yeah, country. <laughs> we, um, you know, the concept of like, you're not in charge of everything. So you don't necessarily, you're not, you don't give yourself this weight. Do you know what I mean? Whether you have to discover that through meditation or a, a faith system, it's like, you're not in charge. And then I would also say uh, you got to exercise. You got to get out of your head. Yeah. Or, you know. Um, well, like in AA, for instance, right? The yeah. root of AA is to help another person. The whole reason why they say that is so that you can get out of yourself and stop right. thinking about yourself so that you can just be out of self. You know what I mean? Right. It also, I want to say this to this person. What's her name? They don't say. Gemma. 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 That in my 30s and 40s is... If I were going to say my highlight, my twilight year, my great years were those years. Yes, my 20s my were depressing 20s. and I was broke and I almost went, fuck this. In my 30s and 40s, when you start making money and you're, you, you know. I you, think 20s is hard because hard. you have completed some kind of education. You're kind of like an officially an adult. You've had fun like, oh, I'm 21. I'm going to mm. party and all this. But then you're like, wait a minute, uh, you start realizing you don't know anything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I, I think that there's, um, and you know, look, I am of Irish descent. There's a lot of mental illness on that island. I would also <laughs> say that, by the way, everyone, everyone, the pandemic, everyone's fucked from it. Like the you like I don't think there's a single human that hasn't been like this has been a great two years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. been great for my parenting. It's been great for my relationship. Yeah. It's like we've all lost our shit. Yeah. Like like it's kind of like a cassette when they fast forward and they're like, blah, blah, blah. like that's we're just dealing with that over and over again. So and if you would have freaked out once every four years, you probably freaked out four times in the last year. Yeah. Right. Also, shutting the mind down and keeping it like the meditation you just said yeah. is probably mm. also a road. Also, if you're thinking about ending your life, coming from somebody who has attempted to do it multiple times in her younger years, and it took me a long time to get out of like my suicidal ideation, especially in my early 20s. Um, somebody said something to me. They were like, what if things don't get better? But what if they do? Mm. And the what if they do really kept me in the game. And uh -huh. I thought to myself, you know what? What if it does? And guess what it did? Mm -hmm. 
And then as I grew up and as I sort of like understood myself better, as I started to understand that like a lot of what I was feeling was just really unresolved shit I wasn't willing to look at in the past or wasn't willing to deal with with a professional. After just giving myself, like honoring myself, like the time and the space, like you will get there mm -hmm. in, you know, so what if it does? What if it gets better? And I think that's worth it enough to just like keep on living. Brilliant woman. Right. Day to day. Mm -hmm. why should, yeah. Why and be? by the way, uh, everyone, I don't know what Gemma has done, like uh, in the mistakes she's made, but like people have like made a massive mistakes and then reinvented themselves. Totally. People mm -hmm. were like bullies in high yeah. school and then they end up being good people. You don't let other people define you. You can reinvent yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I wasn't always the sexy guy. You know, I <laughs> have, evolved. I've been super sexy and now I'm just sexy. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? It's like, it is weird, but like, I, I understand the feeling of being crippling, <laughs> being crippled, kind of like, it's weird because I also I'm, feel like stand up was so liberating for my development. I'm trying to figure out if you and I had a sex scene yeah. in a movie, if I would think that you were sexy. I would say no. I mean, when I say <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. I feel like if you and I had a sex scene, you and I would be laughing. You think we would laugh or we think this is horrible? It, it, we would <laughs> sex scene together? It's like you bring it up kind of like I always ask people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, another yeah. question I ask people is like, if if we were fucking each other, yeah. Um, but I just feel like we'd be giggling a lot and then kind of going like, "This is weird." Yeah, right. And just uh, open your mouth. You know what I mean? Don't do the tongue <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? We'd have to discuss what's allowed, what's not allowed. Yeah, there's like boundaries. There's boundaries, right? But like, I'm at the point where it's like, I'd be like, you know what? We don't even have to. Let's just watch TV. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm kind of like let's order <laughs> let's order delivery. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm much more at that point of my life. So let's plug the Netflix thing because yes. um, w please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please. Good. Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, but where'd you get this? Oh, this they're is, side by yeah. side. Oh, you know I. Not I bad. look good there. Not bad. I think I look buff. In a weird way. Well, you don't look like that anymore, sweetie. That was like 15 years ago. Oh, I don't? No. He doesn't look like that. That's not I Jim. do. I, I wish. I, Jim? Stand up. I mean, I, yeah, I used to. Uh, by the way, I used, in high school, I got voted best male body. <laughs> Are you being real? Don't laugh that hard. Uh, <laughs> it's the only time she laughed all day. Oh, ha, ha, ha. No, I was athletic. Dude, I he's kind of like you. Care. Wow! Oh, wow! Moves like you, dude. <laughs> what? This is a uh, seat. Look, you know what's weird? Yeah. Pause it. Pause it. So they cut this out. Yeah. But yeah. I had camel toe, and they cut it. They, you know, it was this. It was this oh thing. God. That oh my they, god. It was this thing that I put in. Pause. 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 It was in the script. It was I in the pause script. It's a gift. Oh, it is? Oh, and oh, um, that fucking camel toe right there, dude. Wow. Where is, is that your dick hole? Or I mean, what's making no, that? That was, that was uh, the thing they made. They put it over like a uh, running shirt. Oh, oh, that's really that's a cool. Show. So that's it looks like so a fucking <laughs> funny dude. That is so fucking funny, dude. Yeah, no, that's not me. That's not you? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, uh. So when does it come out, the Netflix, Jim? It's It's out. Thanks for watching it. <laughs> it's been out since December. <laughs> December twenty second. December twenty first, right? Twenty first, actually. Yeah. yeah. Can I get, can I say something? Why don't you tell me these things? <laughs> That's all right. No, no, no. It's not all right. You know. Why don't you know? Give me some information. Okay. You know I mean? So I could put on a good show. What do you think? But there <laughs> is <laughs> there is something about you can't expect another comedian to consume every special that comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's a time you're like, all right, I'll watch specials. I've never seen one. You're, really? Yeah, I've never seen one. How many did you watch last year? Zero. I watched Chappelle's new one. Yeah, but the last, the last fifteen minutes, I like that. What do you do? You listen to a lot of old Paul Mooney, is what you do. I listen to a lot of Paul, Paul Mooney. I don't oh, know why. Paul Mooney. Yeah, another one. Did he ever hit on you? No, but he used to say that. Um, he left a voicemail on my machine once, and he goes, "I can't talk to you anymore because you you talk to the white devils." 
I see you at the club. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, like, so if I'm hanging out with white people at the club and Paul Mooney was there, I would literally back away from people because I didn't want... He was like... <laughs> Wait, wait, I'm being real. <laughs> That's how was, fucking crazy you are. No, he was. He, I mean, talk about a brilliant mind. He was brilliant. Brilliant. One of my favorites. But like, it was so funny to see him like on stage. He was like, "I, the white devil, all this stuff, <laughs> brilliant stuff." <laughs> yeah. And then he would get off stage, and he would be hitting on like a white guy, and I'd be like, hmm, it's <laughs> I, like I know, I know. Wait a minute, you you're trying to fuck the devil? Or yeah. What? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But because, you know, that's not, I mean, it was his, he was important to what he did for comedy, I mm -hmm. think. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really important. Yeah. Um. Well, Jim. Thank you. I, I want to say, number one, please come back if you're ever in town. Yes, yes. If you ever need to promote anything, please come to us, to consider okay. us. <laughs> number two, Um. Uh. I have to be admit, I was a little nervous this last hour, but you, you saw a little, I was sweating, this mm -hmm, and that. Mm -hmm. I think I got it together. Um, but um, I want to say that um, you're one of the biggest people we've ever had on, on our podcast. Oh, and thank you. thank you so much for doing it. Well, thanks for Give him a round of applause. Bro. Jim Gaffigan, everybody! Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's up, uh, people of Tiger Belly, the Slup Kingdom, the Sleepers, the Super Sleepers, the Papayas? What other names do we have? What does Bobby call them? Disciples? <laughs> no, I think the, you hit all the big ones. Was that all of it? That was all the main ones. Uh, we was first housekeeping in a long time. First housekeeping in a long time. First housekeeping of 2022. Uh, great episode with Jim Gaffigan. Uh, George, 2022, uh, you've been a father for a while now. How does that feel? Anything easier anything more difficult any new surprises and what do you look forward to nine months now and oh wow well, you could have made another one is there <laughs> nope I'm, I'm waiting for it to get easier to try to convince my wife to have another one mm. uh but also to she's... convince myself too it's yeah it's a lot of work but right now this week he has started he's able to crawl to me and raise his hands to when he wants to get picked up oh that's like new this morning and there's so much. I don't so know. wait, you re he does he do it more to your wife or you? The I pickup. I I only notice it when it's me. It's you. It's okay. also you're the new. favorite. You're the favorite parent. Let's put that let's, out there. Let's she go. Can't, let's go. She can't defend herself. You're the favorite parent. <laughs> I, he cries more when she leaves, but I'm the yeah. I'll, <laughs> you're like, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, that's exciting. Is then what are the what are the I guess what are the data points say about this year for your child going into nine months to whatever to basically a year? Uh, the big to be the big one that's or? gonna happen is uh, walking. So he can finally crawl now. You better be there, man. And it'll be within a couple months. He's so big for his size that I see kids that are like tiny compared to him. He's like nine. Over, he's off the charts for like head size and regular size. There we go, guys. Um, so I see tinier kids like just like sitting down, like walking into daycare. And I'm like, how old is that kid? 13 months. That's Dude, proud dad already. Already uh, shitting on other kids to say my child is more superior and better than your child. Well, he doesn't look it. He looks like he's like he looks older. So he look he looks like yeah. an old kid that can't uh, that can't walk yet. We have a lot of cool guests lined up. Really, a lot that we're really excited about, and we're also planning to push for some more unique guests that maybe you would wouldn't expect to see uh, in the Tiger Belly, I guess, podcast or universe. Look, I'll, we'll just throw some wishful thinking out there. We're trying to get some UFC champions in here. Israel Adesanya. If you're listening, uh, Daniel Cormier, if you're listening, you didn't respond to my DMs. Uh, Bob McClala have demanded that you be on this podcast uh, to laugh with us. So respond to those DMs. Uh, who else? Some directors in here, some of Bobby's favorites. I know George has been working on this. And look, we're going to get him on here. We are going to get the director of Django Unchained on here. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'll be close. Is Tarantino uh, going to be on Tiger Belly, George? Are we close? And let's let the people manifest it for us. We're a lot closer now that we put it out to uh, to the fans. But, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll take some work. It's going to take some work. Uh, a lot of merch coming. We, uh, you guys really crushed the merch. Oh, I just accidentally wore this one. George is wearing When are we going to bring these back? Oh, funny that you said that, George. Should Wait, what? we bring it back? Put it down in the comments below. Because I. Uh, this is the glue bottle hoodie. Is this the one that everybody got? That's the one that we sold out of in uh, one hour four years ago. So I think it's okay. a do. Uh, this someone... is the one, because I also have the zip-up one that I was wearing this week. Oh, I think what you're wearing actually is a... Uh, that, that is a sample. Yeah, this is the... Uh... That's the before we got the zip. 
So George is wearing an exclusive. Some Let's say, make these. I like these, actually. I want the gray. I mean, it's a classic thing. We have glue bottles on tables. We have the giant glue bottle here, if you're watching on YouTube, on the wall. Uh, we got to bring back a glue bottle. And uh, speaking of glue bottles, uh, shout out to all our uh, friends that own the glue bottle uh, NFT that we released. We actually re released a secret 25 amount, uh, 25 minted NFTs of uh, that actual art. And uh, we actually gave fans and mailed them an actual glue bottle from here, the studio that Bobby Lee, the Slop King himself, signed. And that was at legacy.shop slash tiger belly. Uh, Bobby will be going on tour at a point in time. <laughs> That's all I can say. He'll be going on tour at a point in time. Uh, Kalilah's still running uh, running the gamut with uh, those ladies over at Trash Tuesday. So make sure you go hop on over there. You can see George in this seat, actually. Actually, I don't know. Is it different? I don't know. Did we people know about what happened? New set. New set, guys. Well, kind of new set. But new yeah. year, new location. Uh, the ladies have upgraded. Make sure you go follow them. Go watch their show, Trash so Tuesday. I haven't, I haven't checked the comments to see if uh, people actually noticed. Yeah. People must have noticed. There's got to be some wide shots. Yeah. They're, they're probably like, where's the Tiger Belly sign? It's not there anymore. Uh, so this studio is now ours. Uh, me and George are actually going to do some fun things to the studio. Uh, make it a little better. And uh, guess what? We'll keep sending your fan art to uh, the P.O. box, uh, which is on our Instagram. I don't know on the top of my head. I do check that from time to time. And if you do send some art, guess what? It might end up on these walls because now we have more room to put stuff. Uh, it might just be somewhere here. So send your stuff in. Uh, guys, I think that's all we have for housekeeping. Uh, you can follow George at George underscore, underscore Kimmel. Kimmel. And guess what? You guys got to get him more than Andres, right? We got to oh, get yeah, him yeah. more than Andres. Oh, why'd, we, why'd we throw this at the end? Uh, you yeah, can follow this me, up top. Uh, any CDC updates at Gilbert's. Uh, follow Bobby at Bobby Lee Live. Claw at Clam DK. Follow Tiger Belly. If you haven't followed Tiger Belly and you're listening to this, that's ridiculous. Uh, follow us on Instagram. That's where most of our updates come from. We are also posting on Twitter. So that's at the Tiger, at the Tiger Belly. Also, you can email us any uh, unhelpful advice questions at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. Uh, am I missing anything? Uh, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't yet. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, what are you doing? And make sure you listen to us on Apple, on iTunes, Spotify, any of your favorite podcast apps. We love you so much. Here's the outro music that I've inserted. It's getting louder. It's getting louder. We love you. Adios. Adios.